drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi friends welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world previous lectures we discussed about different kind of annealing processes today we will discuss some other heat treatment processes let's start our discussion with the process known as normalizing normalizing is a kind of heat treatment process which is similar to annealing the difference being uh, rather it is similar to full annealing the difference being the cooling rate is quite fast in normalizing compared to full annealing full annealing was carried out in furnace cooling that is it was left in the furnace to cool whereas normalizing is cooled in air so air cooling is faster obviously than furnace cooling similar to full annealing here to what we do is we heat the body above the upper critical temperature how much above upper critical temperature or a3 40 to 50 degree celsius above that temperature hold at that temperature for sufficient long time and then cool it in the air thereby the cooling rate is faster than that for annealing process okay as a result of normalizing what happens is pearlitic microstructure is obtained again here too we are talking about the hypoeutectoid or eutectoid steel we do not normally carry normalizing for hypereutectoid steel for the same reason that for hypereutectoid steel if we carry normalizing then cementite phase will form on the grain boundaries thereby it will be really really brittle okay and uh, what does normalizing do it uh, provides a good homogenization and leads to better dispersion of ferrite and cementite phase okay it is distributed well throughout the microstructure the advantages or the effects of normalizing is that compared to annealing it provides finer grain structure annealing full annealing process was a really had a really slow cooling step thereby there was a grain coarsening taking place normalizing is comparatively faster cooling thereby the finer grains compared to annealing takes place over here in addition to that another advantage over full annealing for normalizing is that normalizing takes less time thereby less energy okay in addition normalizing provides good machinability and better ductility and strength to the ultimate material final material that we obtain as a result of normalizing so you see that normalizing and uh, full annealing are parallel processes the only difference is basically the cooling rate okay now let us discuss about spirodizing spirodizing is a process in which the idea is that cementite that occurs are very fine and elongated sharp particles thereby they are regions of stress concentration and fracture and failure can start from those locations if instead of fine sharp edges for cementite if we rather let them form spears then there will be absence of fine sharp edges and that will improve the toughness of the material so the idea is basically instead of le uh, long cementite particles we get spirodized cementite particles that is the whole idea and as a result of spirodization what happens is that globules of cementite or spears of cementite is dispersed throughout ferrite matrix so we have a matrix of ferrite and in that we have fine particles of cementite spears dispersed throughout okay how does spirodization takes place there are several methods actually 
one of the method is to heat just below a1 temperature so this is a1 temperature we heat it just below a1 temperature like at around 700 degrees celsius hold it there and after that slowly cool it what this does is that it provides sufficient uh, temperature for diffusion to take place and the elongated cementite particles convert to uh, spear, spear shaped cementite particles the driving force being reduction in the in surface area so the reduction in surface area leads to less energy energetically it is favorable to have spherical particles so that is the driving force for spherodization to take place alternatively another method for spherodization is cyclic heating and cooling above and below a1 so if this is temperature and this is time we cyclically heat and cool above and below a1 temperature so these are basically the two most important spherodization methods that are used both of them work equally well now the degree of spherodization that will take place depends on the temperature which you are providing as well as for how long you are providing that temperature suppose we provide sufficient amount of temperature but very short time then maybe only 30% of the cementite converts to uh, is converted to spherical particles if we provide sufficient time then all the uh, elongated cementite converts to spherical cementite particles right normally high carbon and high alloy steel are spherodized to provide sufficient machinability and ductility because these high carbon material will have a lot of cementite particles in it and if all the cementite particles are elongated with a lot of stress concentration they might not have good ductility and machinability low steel if spherodized becomes very very soft okay low carbon steel can also be spherodized but the cementite particles are quite less in low carbon steel and those cementite particles are the things which provide hardness to the material to the steel so if we get rid of those uh, hard particles too then what will happen is the whole material will become very very soft so basically low carbon steel is not spherodized cold worked material spherodize really fast okay and the driving force as i already said for spherodization is reduction in surface area of interface so reduction in surface area of interface leads to reduction in total energy of the system and hence is a favorable process provided the kinetics is supported by giving it sufficient temperature okay so that is about spherodization next let us discuss hardening process hardening process is again basically heating to hardening temperature holding at that temperature and then in annealing what we used to do is we used to furnace cool in normalizing we used to air cool in hardening for hardening we quench it that is cool very rapid very rapid cooling this may be the quenching can be carried out by putting the hot body into oil or maybe water or maybe other quenchant depends on how rapid cooling you require we provide we quench it in different quenchant okay and as a result of hardening processes what happens is instead of pearlite austenite or bainite we get martensitic structure martensite is the hardest material or microstructure that can be obtained from steel and thereby the process is called hardening process right because we are ending up with a very hard martensitic structure now at what temperature the hardening temperature what is the temperature at which we harden or at which we hold the material the idea is 
any transformation for it to occur we need to have 100% austenitic phase because austenite is the phase which can phase transform we cannot get martensite from ferrite in order to get martensite we have to have austenite and only then on quenching austenite we get uh, martensite right so the first thing is to get 100% austenite in order to get austenite we have to go to the single phase austenite region right we have to go to the single phase austenite region so what we do is for hypo we go 30 to 50 degree celsius above a3 above a3 like the full annealing process okay and then we quench it once we have 100 percent austenite in the case of hyper we do not go above acm rather it is sufficient to go above the a1 temperature if we go over here what we are doing is basically we are forming austen cementite uh, austenite plus cementite Cement austenite is itself a very hard phase so if this is present in the martensite it does not reduce the strength of the material so it is okay for hyperutectoid to be in this intermediate temperature range whereas in hyperutectoid if we kept it in the intermediate range we would get alpha phase 2 which is not desirable this will lead to very very softening of the material and since alpha cannot convert into austenite uh, rather into martensite the alpha phase will remain in the final microstructure leading to drastic drop in the strength of the final material okay an additional advantage of keeping the temperature low in hyper eutectoid steel is that when the temperature is less the final microstructure will have very fine martensite why so because if we went to higher temperature we would have gotten uh, we have got uh, would have gotten coarse and austenite now coarse and austenite results in coarse martensite as a end effect okay so if we have finer austenite we'll get fine particles of martensite as a result in addition to that the cementite which we have over here leads to wear resistance it improves the wear properties of the ultimate material which we get so over here what we'll end up getting is martensite plus cementite but as a result of hardening process what happens is that we get really really strong material but very fragile material very brittle material which is not ductile at all thereby hardening gives us a martensi martensitic structure which is not of any practical relevance we cannot put it into production we cannot manufacture anything out of it so we need to restore some ductility into the material before converting it into something useful right and that is done exactly by a process or a heat treatment process known as tempering tempering process has always to be carried out in combination with the hardening process tempering results in improve in ductility reduce internal strain at the cost of slightly losing out on strength okay so basically the idea is hardening in hardening together with tempering gives you improved wear property and optimum strength and ductility fine so today's lecture what we saw is we saw normalizing which was similar to full annealing except for the fact that it is air cooled we saw spherodizing in which basically we convert cementite into spherical particles thereby improving the machinability and we saw the hardening process which is used to provide or produce very strong martensitic structure I'll catch up with you in the next lecture and discuss some additional heat treatment processes. Till then, have a great day. Goodbye.